love snow. Because <laughs> she's heard me so many times complain about this winter. I say, Aisha, it's not by force. She said, Mommy, say you love snow. <laughs> I say, I don't like snow. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's get into the word of God. Yes. I'm going to just take a short time and then I'll get you out of here. My sermon today is authentic life. How to live an authentic life. Amen. Praise God. I woke up this morning at 5 a.m. trying to prepare a message. And today I said, God, we're going to flow because wherever I'm not finding my happy place in my preparation. So are you ready to flow? Yes. You don't know what's going to come out of me. I say, God, let the words of my mouth and meditation to my heart be accepted to you today as a minister to these people because I'm not, I, I tried to find myself in the word and I couldn't. Amen. So I know God wants to do something different for us. Hallelujah. Authentic life. Yesterday we saw, uh, last Sunday, who was here last Sunday when Apostle was ministering? Last Sunday was very deep, emotional. Amen. But we were blessed by the message of last Sunday. God was with us, amen. amen. We're so blessed to have Apostle as our pastor, amen. amen. A good example to follow. Acts 16, 1 to 3. Paul came to Derby and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconon spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey. Amen? So he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. So the Bible talked about Timothy, who was a young kid when Paul took him along with him. He says that he heard how people spoke good about him. He had a good testimony. Say, he had a good testimony. Do we have people in this house who have a good testimony? Because at the end of the day, what's going to get attracted from people for you? It's your testimony. It's your signature. It's who you are. Yes. Hallelujah. Who has a good testimony here? I'm going to ask the people around you, then they will tell me. I'm just kidding. So Paul was attracted by this young boy because he had a good testimony. Amen? And he wanted to take him along his journey of ministry. So I thought about Paul, this great of men of God. What did he see in this young man who was about 20, maybe 19, maybe 21, to want to take him along? What does it take for somebody to look at you and they say, I want Nilda. I want to take her along on my journey of ministry with God. We want people to take us along the journey because this journey, we can't do it alone. Hallelujah. So Paul said, this Timothy young kid, I see potential. Hallelujah. Do you see potential in yourself? If you don't see potential in yourself, nobody's going to see it in you. If you walk down like that, nobody's going to look at you. They're going to say, hey, look at her. Pretty, but she doesn't even know what she has in her. I don't want her on my journey. So Paul saw this young man and said, mm, I want this boy and I want him with me. What does it take for somebody to see something in you and want to go with you? What does it take for a man to see something in you and want to marry you? What does it take a boss to look at you and say, I want to give that person a promotion? Say, God, give me a good testimony. Whatever I am, give me a good testimony. 
Let my life display the testimony of Christ. Let my life attract those who I need to move forward in my journey. God said he's going to push somebody in, in his purpose. You need somebody to push you forward. Amen? Amen. Say, I need somebody. I need somebody. I need, somebody. I need a Paul along the way. I need a Paul who will see the genuineness in me. Who will hear the testimony of my work. Say, I need a testimony. Now, if your testimony is not cute, today we need to make it cute. We need to polish it. Hallelujah. We need to get better in what we do and how we do it. We need to get better in how we talk to people. We need to get better. We cannot be bullies and thinking that's who I am. No, no, no. You need to get better in how God wants you to present yourself. We are the image of Christ, the Bible says. So we need to get better. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard somebody who was talking, you know, when they are doing renovations of building churches, or they're like, man, how can a Christian be like that when we are working together? Our testimony needs to change. We can't go on God, I pray God, you bring me forward and you live like the devil. Amen? You can't believe to be the greatest prime minister of this country. And, and the words that come out of your mouth, they are not trustworthy. Even Jesus is like, man, I'm not sure what's going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying today? You need to have a good testimony in your life. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about striving toward becoming like Jesus. Amen. Say, God, I want to be like you. I want people to see the Christ in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Beyond my imperfection. Nowadays, people are looking for an authentic relationship with Jesus. They come to Christ, to church, looking for authenticity. Because fake is out there. And they are tired of fake. They are tired of fake. So when they come in the house of God, they want to see an authentic touch of the master. And what they do first, they look at people. They need to see God in the people. Hallelujah. We need to live a life of authenticity. Amen. So Paul says, I want this young boy. I want him to come with me on my journey of service. You know when somebody put his hand to walk with you, he's taking a chance. Hallelujah. Because your mistake become his mistakes. Your bad behavior become his bad behavior. So we need to, to be people who are striving to, striving to have a good testimony. Amen? So in 1 Timothy 1, 1, 2, he says, Paul, an apostle of Christ, he's writing a letter. And he's writing it to Timothy. Jesus, Christ, no, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the commandment of God, our Savior of Jesus Christ, who is our hope, to Timothy, my true child in the faith, in the faith, to Timothy, my true child in the faith. So I look at that word, my true child. The word true comes from a Greek word, meaning gne, gne, no, something. From the same root as legitimate, genuine, sincerity, true. That's what that word means, my true child in the faith, amen? It means my own, sincere, true, Genuine. Hallelujah. God is looking for people who are true, genuine, and sincere with him in his relationship with them. God is looking for an authentic people. Amen? Authentic, not false, or copied. Genuine, real. That's the meaning. Representing one's true nature of belief. True to oneself or to the other person identified. The opposite of authentic is fake. Fake. Hallelujah. 
We want Cross Point not to be a fake church, but an authentic church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Today, I want you to turn on your left and on your right. Say, let me find my authentic self in God. Don't try to push me to be the God that you envision for me. Turn to your left and to your right. Say, let me find my authenticity. Let me find my genuineness. Hallelujah. I don't want to be like you in my walk with God. I want to be me and find God in my ways because he created me differently. He knows what he has placed inside of me. Are you hearing me today? We need to stop judging people because they don't look like us, because they don't pray like us, because they don't smell like us. Say, let me be. When God called me to salvation, you were not there. Don't be involved in my walk with Christ. Are you hearing me today? Do not put your hand into my relationship with Christ. I know what I'm talking about. People want to make you in an image that they have formed, but that's not God for you. If God touched you this way, maybe he's going to touch me that way. Let him do it without your involvement. Hello? You can judge me all you want, but I'm walking with Christ. And if he's fine with me, and he's fine by me, you better be fine with me and fine by me. I may not look like the way you want me to look, but I am who I am by the grace of God. Any relationship that's not based on authenticity, it's not a strong relationship. Anytime a husband wants to try to change a wife, it's not authentic. Let her be. Let him be. It takes a lot of courage to be who God wants you to be. And now today I want to give you that courage to stand up against all odds and say, God, it's between you and me. I want to come in that place of intimacy with you. Face to face with you, removing my mask of religiosity and be who God you call me to be. God spoke to me one day. He said, I will never use what I have not placed inside of you. If it's not from me, I will not use it because I need to draw glory from what I've put inside of you. So whatever the world wants to make, I'm not going to use it. You can have fun trying to fit in a box, fit in the way you're going to talk, fit in the way you're going to work, ministry, you're going to look. The world can be happy for that, but me, I will not use it because it's not for my glory. I will draw glory only in what I put inside of you. I will draw glory only in the grace and the anointing I have placed inside of you. Are you hearing me today? Nowadays, it's hard to be authentic because you go on Facebook, Twitter, you want to look fake, pretty, you want to fix everything to look so you, you are perfect image. Right? Have you ever taken a picture and you are in the group? The first thing you look at is like, oh, it's not good. You know why? Because you don't look good in that. But if you look good in that, the picture is pretty. Of course, right? We're trying to create an image. But God is looking for a people that is authentic in his relationship with him. God, we are looking for relationship that are clean, sincere, and genuine. I told God I'm done with fake people. Uh, first of all, I'm done with being fake. <laughs> I'm done in being fake. However my fake looks like, I'm still working on it. Hallelujah. It takes a long time to change. <laughs> Listen to me. Don't try to put an image of what, how your pastor should look like. If you're not proud of me in my authenticity, if you're not happy, 
happy with the way I talk, I walk, I sing. You know what? Go do you because I found my happy place. May my happy place is being who God called to me, how he called me to do, how he called me to dress, how he called me to talk, how he called me to write. If you're not happy with it, let's part ways. Hasta la vista. Find your God. I'll find my God. But you see, we are tired of fake people, and we are drawn by people who are authentic because we want to be authentic. But we're not allowing the genuineness of who we are because we are afraid of how God, people will take us. We are afraid. When you find your authenticity and it's mixed with your personality, power comes because God wants to go at the depths of how he created you with the gift that he has given you. And when they comes in contact, it becomes an explosion. When you find your true authenticity, then creativity comes. Who's tired of being something they are not supposed to be? I'm tired. So Paul said, Timothy, you, you are the genuine thing. You are the real thing. I want to walk along with you. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Today, I want to give you freedom. To say, God, enough is enough. I know there's a fight in me of what I want to project and who I am. There's a battle inside of us. Who would want people to perceive me as and who truly I am? So which, which one is going to win? Today, take off all the masks. Say, God, I want to be me. In my brokenness, I want to be me. In my weakness, I want people to see Christ in me. Yes. Paul was a man who was very authentic. He said, I, I find pride in my weakness because I know when I'm weak, the power of God is being manifest in me. Man, authenticity is not weakness. Hallelujah. It's not weakness. I say, God, I want to be in my happy place with you. What is your happy place? Your happy place is that place between you and your God. When you come naked before him and you stop quoting verses, <laughs> and you say, God, I'm coming naked. Now, let this verse come alive in me. God is not impressed with our ability to speak the word of God. God wants to come in contact with you one-on-one. -on -one. I like what David said. Search me, God. See me. Test me. And see if there's anything in me. He opened up his heart. To God and say, God, test me, see me. Look down deep. Let's do the work together. However long it's going to take. However painful it's going to take. Nowadays we are clothed in Bible verse, but the Bible is not living in us. Why? Because we haven't found that place of authenticity with our God. Where we go in the sincerity of who we are. And be okay to be vulnerable in front of God. If you cannot be vulnerable in front of God, you can be vulnerable in, in front of anyone. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me today? I want us to be free. Because whom the Son set free is free indeed. Say, God, let this word come alive in me. Let this word come alive in me. Some of us, we are tired of not changing and pretending. Hallelujah. No, I'm talking to a church that is, you know. Because I want authentic power. I don't want fake power. 
I don't want power that comes from a gift. I want power that comes from my experience with Christ. Uh, 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 uh. If it's going to take a lifetime for me, it'll take a lifetime for me. Did you hear me today? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Aren't we tired to be who God has not called us to be? Tired to put on mask? Any relationship and friendship that's not based on authenticity is from, not from God. Nowadays, all we want is to connect deeply. We want to love deeply. Yes. Hallelujah. We want to belong deeply. Hallelujah. I want to belong. I want to connect with you on a deep level. So don't give me your fake you. God, pastor, God is faithful. I'm strong. And inside you are breaking into pieces. And uh, You know what I'm saying? They are not sure. <laughs> you know, during the day we have a projection of how we need to look, but when we go to bed, we're something else and somebody else. This is not true Christianity. He said, Timothy, he's the real thing. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 1 5, the Bible says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois. Nowadays, I'm gonna talk to people who feel, you know, discouraged when they see people are powerful in prayer and intercession. And then they make them, they feel little because I don't pray like this one, I don't prophesize like this one, then I'm not. What is this nonsense? Your your intimacy with God is not measured in your capacity to perform. Your intimacy with God is not measured in your capacity to perform, to pray, and fast, and, and, and shandalai, and, and, and prophesy, and heal for the sick. That's not your intimacy. That's just a gift, you know, working through you. So listen, to you who think that you have nothing to offer, think again. Hallelujah. You have something to offer. I met a lady the other day. She's like, Pastor, you know, I feel like I'm not doing anything for the Lord. I don't want to miss out on what God said. I said, how about you just be first? How about you just be? How, how about we just... The basic of our relationship with God is not in doing, but in being. Yes, I said, I give you permission to just be. Be. Because from that place of being, from that place of rest, you find your work, your calling, and your destiny. Hallelujah. God is not looking for machines. He's looking for human beings who will have an experience with him, who will walk along with him until they do what God is asking them to do, step by step. Anything that's not done in faith, in quietness, and trust is not from God. So every time you are, you say, yeah, 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 chill. Because everything God does is in quietness and trust. Hallelujah. So let's look for those kind of relationships. Paul says, I know the sincere faith that's in you, that was in your mother, that was in your grandmother. Sincere faith. Authentic faith. Today, I want we go back to that place of intimacy and we say, God, when all is said and done, 
Do I know you? Do you know me? <laughs> Am I intimately acquainted with your ways? Hallelujah. Am I in the image of who you are, your son? Because at the end of the day, our true authenticity is in looking like Jesus. So now you hear people say, let me be me, my truth. I'm speaking my truth. Yes, it's your truth. But you know what? We have to have the courage to realize that we are broken. And the truth of the word of God is really our truth. I say, God, no more fake relationships. If I don't feel your vibe, I'm not going to push. See, I have young teenage girls and, you know, vibe. If you're not vibing, I'm not coming. <laughs> if there's no vibe, I'm not going to force. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, when you marry, those vibe storylines are different. <laughs> it's different, okay? So God is looking for the people of God to have an authentic relationship with him, an authentic relationship, fellowship with one another. Amen. I want when people come in this house, they see a church that is on fire, but they see a church that is open arm to Christ, not busy at looking at somebody's shoe or watch, yeah. but yeah. busy at finding their God. Yeah. We do not come in the house of God just to look cute. You can come cute, it's okay. But once you get here, your job is not to look at the left or the right unless you want to minister to somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. I need to see people again here in front. What happened to you guys? Now we've got to force you guys to come in front. What is that? It's between you and your Jesus. Come in front. And find this God. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said today? A church that knows that their brokenness is their strength in God. Now we are afraid to be close to people because people are not willing to be authentic. Don't say hi to me, Shandalayan, giving me Bible verses of how I just need to live my life. I just need you to touch me. Say, are you okay? Amen. It's good to see you this morning. Yeah. I'm glad you made it despite the snow. Hello? Hi. You know what I told God? I said, I'm tired of being a pastor who happened to be a human being. Now, I'm a human being who happened to be a pastor. Did you hear what I said? I'm a human being who happens to be a pastor. We are human beings who happen to be blood bought by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, I won't find my authenticity, but you got to let me find it. I want you to find your authenticity, but you got to allow yourself to find it. Hallelujah. The hindrance to authenticity is unworthiness. We come before God and we don't feel worthy. So when we come to God and not feeling worthy, then there is not an authentic relationship with him. God said, let me read those Bible verses for those who are struggling. I like what Oscar Wilde said, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. <laughs> the Lord has appeared of all to me, saying, yes, this is my favorite Bible verse. Give me five more minutes, I'll be done. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. 
Next, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He has done it for you, amen? God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. So what is the qualifier to be find worthy is being a sinner. Hallelujah. The very fact you are a sinner makes you worthy because then the blood of Jesus comes and makes you worthy. Are you hearing me today? Now we receive Christ, we accept we are sinners, and after, because we're not, quote, quote, being who God is asking us to be, we start feeling unworthy. Then the intimacy we have with Christ becomes broken. So come to God in your brokenness. Hallelujah. He said, no greater love. No greater love than one who lays down his life for one another. God was saying, I'm about to show you greater love. I'm about to die on the cross. So you know my love for you is from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Cannot be measured by what you do and what you don't do. Find your worthiness in what I've done for you. Hallelujah. If you're not feeling worthy of who you are, then you cannot have an authentic relationship with people. Because you're going to always feel shame, feeling like I'm not measuring up. Then you're going to try to put some walls around you. Hallelujah. Number two, vulnerability. We must be a people who can be vulnerable and be okay with it. And man, vulnerability is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Hallelujah. It's okay not to have it all together. It's okay not trying to fix us, women. It's okay to say that you are in a very bad place. Because that's when Christ's power comes into effect in your life. Hallelujah. We must learn to be vulnerable. Be able to get to a place where we say, God, I don't have it all together. But then God comes into effect. Come into effect, amen? Amen. We want to have an authentic relationship with God. When I got born again, I told God, you know what? I'm not going to be like them, how they look with walking with their Bible, you know, back home. You know, when the movement, the charismatic movement was born, all the born again turned into something else. They were talking to us, and then after they stopped. And the only time they talked to us was to preach the gospel to us. And we were like, okay, I'm confused. What happened? You know what I'm saying? So that was the image I had of born-again Christian. So when I came here and God started ta- pushing me to receive him, I told him, I'm going to serve you, but don't ask me to be like them because I don't want to be like them. But then with time, you start losing your authenticity because you want to fit in the Christian group In the pastor's wife group, (laughs) in the pastor group, in the motherhood group, in fatherhood group, everything needs to look perfect. And then you lose your authenticity. And you start changing things that you're not supposed to change. And then God gave me a revelation one day. He said, oh, this year, because you are miserable, I was miserable. God said, you are trying to change your personality. And your personality is my gift to you. You're trying to change who you are. And that cannot be changed. So I was frustrated. God wants to change our character. Hallelujah. But not our personality. Our personality, that's what makes us. Right? Be happy with who you are. We love it. We love it when you are you. We love it when you're not fake. We love it the way you talk about Jesus in your broken English. 
We love it. In your lack of understanding of the Bible, we love your passion. We love how you scream, Juliet, hey, we love it. Without Juliet, this church will be something else, amen? Do you know what I'm saying? Fake Christian. And then, oh, behold, you have a title in the church. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm a pastor now. I'm an evangelist now. Don't talk to me like that. You're like, okay. Okay. Valaba. <laughs> I'm not defined by my title. I'm defined by my position in Christ. I'm a daughter of the Most High God. Loved, accepted. Hallelujah. And called by God. You can call me Nadia, you can call me Mama, whatever you choose to call me, does not affect my position in Christ. But just by respect, just say pastor, okay? (laughs) But you see what I'm trying to get? Then we put on this title, we, we dress them up to feel important. Your importance has nothing to do with what God has called you to do. It has to do with your position. Seated in Christ, in high places, ruling and reigning. So nowadays, men and women of God, they are so fake because they have an image to keep. So fake. And you feel it when it's around you. You're like, ugh. Hallelujah. Today we are flowing. We are flowing. If somebody can come close to you as a leader, something is wrong with you. They need to respect me. They need to respect. Are you kidding me? Let the love of God in you draw them to you. Not your title. Hallelujah putting divine alignment in the house of God. No, I'm not talking about my leaders. They are powerful. Hallelujah. (laughs) Humble, amazing. And that's true. Hallelujah. Let's not let think define us. I need to have a big house. (laughs) I need to have a beautiful car. Can I tell you a secret? I feel so ashamed, but I'm okay. Anyway, so <laughs> I moved back from Montreal, and then we live in a very humble little townhouse. Okay? Oh, Jesus, why do I have to talk about it? Anyway, vulnerable, amen? And then I'm driving my daughter to school in my cute little car, humble car, my little Murano. And then I'm like, God. Come on, I'm Apostle Elijah's wife. Everybody knows who he is. And then I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. I don't want people to come see my little condo, not people of the church, people of outside. I'm feeling so insecure about it, you know? And then I said, God, what is wrong with me? You know what I'm saying? Don't look at me weird. You do it. I said, God, I want my Mercedes. Hey, if God puts you on your heart to buy the Mercedes, go for it, okay? For me. Amen? And I said, God. First of all, when I came back, I told God, I don't want that Murano back here. It did its time in Montreal. I said, I want my Mercedes, God. I deserve a Mercedes, at least. God, three years struggling, working for you, a Mercedes. (laughs) Even Ernest has a Mercedes, God. (laughs) 
can wait on the Range Rover, but a second hand Mercedes will be okay. And so I started feeling, you know, I'm around people who know me. I don't want them to see my car. I don't want them to see where I live, right? Because the Bible says people look at the outside. That's the Bible verse I was using. God, the people look at the outside. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I started feeling ashamed, trying to hide from people. I say, God, I have people in my church. They have Mercedes. They have big houses, and I'm their pastor. How can I live? How can I have a tiny car like this one? <laughs> and when I start feeling like I don't want people to see me, I say, God, mm -mm -mm. this is from the devil. Yeah. Yeah. This is from the devil. It's not from God. Yeah. And the light of Christ came in me. And God liberated me. You know why? Because the devil was trying to put shame on me trying to make me feel little. Here I am, I'm back. Now I'm feeling little. He's trying to find something to make me feel small. And then I confessed it to a friend of mine. And when I confessed it, and then it was gone. It's amazing what the enemy will try. To belittle you. Put shame on you. The devil is a liar. And it was gone. And I'm like, God, what happened to this pretty lady of me? I know the Mercedes is coming. It's coming by faith. I'm just putting it out in the atmosphere. <laughs> but see, listen, authentic life, authentic walk with God, authentic relationships. Are we ready to put off our, ma our mask today? Not be defined but what we, what we have, who, who, who look at us, how we look like. But be defined by who God says we are. Can we stand up in the presence of God? Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. He puts things your way to break you so that you can hide. You can hide and not become who God wants you to be. He put little lies in your head. If people saw who, true you, you, who you are truly, nobody would talk to you. That's the devil. That's the devil. The Bible says confess your sin to one another. He does, you know, it doesn't say confess your sin to God. It said to one another. Because that's a sign of vulnerability. And vulnerability brings connection. And connection brings intimate relationships. And intimate relationship brings the love of God. Did you hear me today? Yes. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Don't be afraid to tell people you're going through stuff. That's what defines you as a human being. Don't be afraid to tell people because the enemy always try to isolate you. Isolate you. You are surrounded, but you are isolated because of the lie of the enemy inside of you, telling you you're not good enough. Today, I want to come before God. I want to say, God, I want to redefine this relationship between you and me. I want you to remove every fakeness, every religiosity. Remove it. God, I want a true, authentic relationship, sincere. I want to be okay with where I am at with you because this is not a race of how I look like compared to the other one. We need to come back to that place of intimacy with God. See me, know me. See if there's any wickedness. God, let's work towards becoming like you, Jesus. I want to have a good testimony. I want to have a good testimony, God. 
Whatever title you have put on your head, you think it defines you. Today, I want you to break it. Because you see, God wants to bring people around you. That he wants you to minister to them. But you have placed walls around you. And they cannot come through. Do you understand today, for those called to minister, say, I have to be authentic. I have to have a broken relationship with my Jesus. Today, I want you to redefine your relationships. Don't set off for fake. We were made for connection. We were made to belong. We were made to belong. It doesn't matter what you have gone through in your life. You got to open your heart again and be willing to love and be loved. True living start when you start opening your heart. Uh, take a chance of showing up every day. Say, God, I choose to be me. And those who love me will come around me. Those who love me for who I am. There's people you get close to them, you can see. They're afraid to open up. God has not called us to be alone. I want cross point to be the real thing. Real thing. I say real thing. Are you the real thing today? Are you the real thing today? Can people look at you and say, yeah, she's the real thing. She's authentic and genuine in her love for Christ, in her love for people, in how she ministered to me, how she's there. Are you the real thing? Can people say, yes, they are the real thing? Can we remove all those walls? Fake image, spiritual makeup. That we cannot get loose, lost in how we perceive our lives. Say, God, I want to be authentic today. In my relationship with you, I want to be authentic. Ask God to break every wall of protection you have put around you. Take a chance on life again. Take a chance on relationships again. I know you've been hurt, you've been broken, you've been abused. But you can never experience the love of people around you if you keep putting an image, a wall. Today, be vulnerable again in the eyes of God. Open up your heart again. The more I love God, the more I serve Him, the more all I want to do is to be me. Because in me, I find my happy place. I don't need to work hard. I just be me. It's natural. Today, I give you permission to be you. Today, receive your humanity and let God's grace come and touch. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up here. Authentic faith, genuine faith, a faith that's not based on circumstances. Today, I want you to hold your wife or your husband and look at them in the eyes and tell them, I want to have an authentic marriage with you. I want to have an authentic relationship with you. And tell them, I give you permission to be you. Come on, do it. I give you permission to express yourself. I might not get you, but I'm going to listen to you. I 
I want wife to look at your husband and say, your vulnerability is your strength. It's not your weakness. You are safe with me. I won't take you as weak if you are vulnerable. Talk to your husband. I give you room to express yourself. Talk to your wife. Husband, talk to your wife. Say, I give you permission to express yourself without me trying to change you. I will not fix you. I want you to take, turn to your brother and your sister in the Lord. Say, let me find my Christ by myself. Don't try to make me who God has not called me to be. I give you permission to be you, to find your Jesus in your own ways. I give you permission. I give you permission to walk with God in your way. I give you permission to take the time that's needed to walk out whatever you need to walk out with your Jesus. I'll pray for you. I'll be there for you. But I will not try to impose my belief, my way of seeing, my way of doing on you because I want your relationship relationship with God be, to be authentic. I give you your permission to be imperfect today. I give you permission to be human. I give you permission to come and worship God the way you feel like it. Hallelujah. Because we want authenticity in everything we do. We want genuineness in everything we do. We want the real thing with our Jesus. Jesus said, come to me and let reason together. Reasoning, meaning you have your point of view, I have mine. Let's reason together. I'm not afraid of your way of seeing because I am God. I have my ways. I know how to speak to you. God said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Draw near with your mouth and your heart and everything about you. I won't hurt you. I won't break you because my love for you it's from everlasting to everlasting. With my love, I will draw you and keep drawing you. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? We're going to give an authentic worship to God today. And let it be about you and your Jesus. Say, God, the things I, need, I used to know today, I put them aside. I come before you naked, God, and say, here is my worship. Here is my worship. You know that song? Can you sing it? Here is my pride, God. Here is my brokenness, God. Here is my vulnerability, God. Do something. I give it to you. Can I pray with you guys? Lift up your hands in the presence of God. Say, God, today we come naked again. We want to have a sincere and genuine relationship with you. We want to have an authentic relationship with you. God, every wall of protection today, I put it down, God. God, I give you my heart again. I trust you with it. The same way Paul took Timothy, along the way, take my hand today, God. 
and walk with me until there's genuineness in my faith with you, in my walk with you, God. I want to have a transparent relationship with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is just a call to intimacy. Intimacy meaning intimacy. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you, for God to give you healthy relationships where you can practice authenticity without fear. Lift up your hand. Father God, we give you praise. God, you have created us for love, for connection, for belonging, for relationship, God. God, you have called us to have deep, godly, loving relationship. God, I pray that you would surround your people with healthy relationships where people can find their authentic self and fully enjoy this life. God, I pray that you will remove every relationship that is toxic in their life, that hold them back, that do not allow them to be themselves, God. Surround them with healthy, authentic relationships. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Can we give this song to the Lord and then we may be dismissed? Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? All of my worship. Hallelujah. Receive my worship.